When does life begin? Logic leads to an astonishing answer. Written and read by Bernhard Kutzler. The question of when life begins is the subject of much ideological debate today. There are two groups. Some say that life begins at conception. Others say it begins at birth. Follow me through three thought experiments that lead to an answer. As you will learn to understand, both groups are wrong. Life begins neither at conception nor at birth. A cell is the smallest unit of life. Reproduction is one of the elementary behaviors of life. Imagine a cell A that multiplies by dividing. Throughout the division process, it remains one cell until the very moment of physical separation when it becomes two cells, A1 and A2. Which of the following statements is true? First, A died and A1 and A2 were born. Second, A lives on in A1 and A2 was born. Third, A lives on in A2 and A1 was born. Fourth, A lives on in both A1 and A2. If the first statement is true, that is, A died and A1 and A2 were born, cell A would have committed suicide by dividing. This contradicts the principle of life. And it would be absurd to choose the moment of division as the death of A and the birth of A1 and A2. If the second statement is true, why not the third? Or vice versa, it would be arbitrary and therefore absurd to regard A1 or A2 as the continuation of A and the other as the child. Under unfavorable environmental conditions, an amoeba performs multiple division, which can generate hundreds of new cells. In this case, it would be even more absurd to determine which cell A lives on as. Therefore, the only logical answer is that cell A continues to live as both A1 and A2. It simply has two bodies after division. A cell reproduces by creating more and more bodies of or for itself. It clones itself repeatedly. This is a very effective strategy because the cell survives even if some of its bodies get destroyed. Next, we look at sexual reproduction. This involves the fusion of two cells, such as an egg cell and a sperm cell. When two cells A and B fuse, the result is a single cell AB. Which of the following statements is true? First, A and B died and AB was born. Second, A lives on in AB and B has died. Third, B lives on in AB and A has died. Fourth, both A and B live on in AB. Every variant in which something dies contradicts the principle of life. Therefore, the fourth statement is true. A and B both live on in AB. After a division, a cell has two bodies. After a fusion, two cells have one body. You can apply similar arguments to multicellular life forms such as plants, animals and humans. The details are in my book Consciousness, its nature, purpose and how to use it. The logic is crystal clear. Life is something other than bodies. Life is a phenomenon that expresses and spreads through bodies. Life does not die. Bodies die. Computers are a good analogy. They comprise hardware and software. Software expresses and spreads through hardware. Some software runs on millions of pieces of hardware. Software does not die. Hardware dies. Are bodies hardware and is life software? No, it's not that simple. Software is a manifestation of a know-how, namely the knowledge of how to do something. For example, if I know how to solve a quadratic equation, I could write software that does it. The software would be a manifestation of my know-how. Hardware is also a manifestation of a know-how, namely the knowledge of how something is constructed in order to fulfill a certain function. 
A car, for example, is a manifestation of the knowledge of how a self-moving device, an automobile, is constructed. Life forms are also manifestations of a know-how, namely the knowledge of how to survive. The body of a life form is a hardware of life. The behavioral programs of a life form are a software of life. Let's do a third thought experiment. We travel back in time and observe the first cell in the history of planet Earth. We call it Sally. Sally reproduces by dividing. After the first division, Sally has two bodies. Each body goes its own way and continues to divide. Soon Sally has four bodies, then eight, then sixteen. Let's assume that each body divides once a day. After 10 days, Sally could have had 1024 bodies, but there are slightly fewer because some bodies died. They ended up in environments where they could not survive. After another 10 days, Sally has about 100,000 bodies. Another elementary behavior of life is what often is called adaptation of behavioral programs to the environment. Therefore, the 100,000 bodies of Sally, living in 100,000 different environments, have different behavioral programs. Each body behaves in a way that suits its particular environment. After another 10 days, Sally has about 5 million bodies. Again, some bodies had died because they ended up in hostile environments. Others have died because the bodies use each other as food and therefore as a source of energy. Sally simply creates its own food. One day, one of Sally's bodies divides as usual. But the two new bodies stay together and live as a team. This is the first multicellular life form and it too is a body of Sally. After billions of years, Sally reaches the diversity of life on this planet as cells, plants, animals and humans. And all of them are bodies of Sally. Sally began several billion years ago with one body and one behavioral program. Together they were a manifestation of the know-how of that time on how to survive. This know-how grew through the experiences of the countless bodies that Sally created. Each body had its own life story and enriched the know-how of survival. So what is life? Life is a powerful, ever-changing knowledge, the know-how of survival. It expresses itself through bodies. Life is neither born nor dies. Bodies are born and die. Where is this know-how? Where is life? Know-how is knowledge. It is made of the fabric that thoughts are made of. This fabric is pure information and not part of the physical universe. I describe this fabric in my book on consciousness. In my blogcast, Intuition is much more than just a sixth sense, I describe an insight about life that supports and complements the perspective presented here. The answer to the question, when does life begin, is therefore, on this planet life began a few billion years ago. We observe the coming and going of bodies, each of which is one of billions and billions of aspects of this one global life. Finally, two exercises. Exercise 1. Reflect on the fact that life is independent of physical bodies and that you are an expression of life. Reflect on what this insight means to you and your interactions with your environment. Exercise 2. Meditate on the fact that you are both your mother and your father and that you are all your children. Since your children are their children, you are also all your grandchildren. And since each of your parents are, or were, their parents, you are your four grandparents. <laughs>